Hey, it's Peter Gregg, Miami, Florida, and I'm in Peter's Kitchen. Uh, what are we going to make today? I got to make dinner. Sit back, relax. You are about to watch a Peter Gregg video. Something warm, human, and wonderful happens when you watch Peter Gregg. Okay, we got chicken thighs, chicken thighs, chicken thighs. Uh, Sly got me this instant pot for Peter's Kitchen. So she said she's going to make some chicken thighs. So I bought a package of chicken thighs. So what are we going to do with the chicken thighs? First, we got to open the package. Here we go. I'm using a scissors. I know it's a new modern device that you use these days. Scissors. Okay. And now I could salt them and flip them and do all that kind of stuff. But hey. I'm a guy. I want to do it easy as pie. So let's just get a bowl. A bowl. B-O-W-L bowl. <laughs> and put the thighs in the bowl. Kind of like putting the lime in the coconut. Yeah, that kind of thing. Okay. So with chicken, you want to make sure that you keep your fingers clean, your utensils clean. You don't do any cross um, contamination. I'm getting a little... Uh, thingy here okay so I'm gonna kind of divide them up why don't I put the camera the overhead camera on so you can see I got one of those yeah I bought it I bought it at uh, uh, you, you know the five and nine okay so now I'm just gonna take the chickens and make sure they're individuals my hands are gonna go in here eventually okay so don't be thinking that they're not they are I'm going to just get them so they're separated in the package. So this is an easy, fast to make, but not fast to cook, okay? And the reason for that, and I'll talk you through this uh, in a second, but first, I want to kind of get all the ingredients going in here. So I'm gonna just sprinkle it with a little E-O-O-V-V-D-D-D, -D -D, whatever they call this stuff. This is extra virgin olive oil, okay? <laughs> all right, and then uh, I'm not going to cross contaminate yet, but I am going to put and sprinkle it with a little nutmeg. Nutmeg on chicken thighs? I'm just, you know, there's a billion channels. You don't like this? Go somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just laughing when I say that it's because it's like, no, I don't want that. All right, so this is like uh, onion powder. See, that's what it is. Onion powder. Onion powder actually is a little bit sweet. Okay, so just cover it all like you're salting it heavily. Okay, and then we need a little bit of um, salt. So I'm going to use garlic salt. There we go. I wanted to... Okay, so I got... I'm not going to over salt it because I, I take... Personally, I take blood pressure pills. So I'm not supposed to have salt. But anyway, and then a little garlic powder. There we go. So I'm putting some, now you don't have to use this brand. You can use whatever stinking brand you want. Just put some garlic powder. Garlic powder is going to give it some heat. Then I'm going to use something I'm not going to show you. Yeah, well, I'll show it to you. This is uh, wild oregano. Wild oregano, okay? So this is kind of a little bit different than what you get in the store. You can find this kind of like on Amazon, but it's it's kind of like from the Mediterranean area. So I'm sprinkling this kind of like all over. It's going to give it going to give it that restaurant taste. That's like what's in this thing, okay? And then I personally take the oregano when I buy it, and I even grind it finer. I'm not interested in oregano chunks and stuff like that in here. Okay, one more thing, one more thing, okay? Um, you could put like two or three tablespoons of strawberry jelly or apricot jelly. I use apricot jelly a lot. Or you could just use brown sugar. Just get brown sugar all over it, okay? Heavy on the brown sugar. Is this going to taste like super sweet? No, this is actually going to bring out the natural flavors. Okay, now I'm going to close this up, all right? So... I didn't touch the chicken, so I'm not cross-contaminating. Now I'm going to mix so all of this gets coated up. No biggie. This is not a major. Uh, this is not a major uh, uh, thing to do. I just want all of this stuff to get 
uh, coated all over the chicken. I'm going kind of fast, so it's kind of like spilling out. All right, so now uh, it looks like I need a little bit more olive oil, so I'm going to not contaminate and use my left hand, and I'm going to pour some more olive oil over the top, okay? That's going to kind of like help it to bind. You know, these nice fancy words that they use when you cook, it's going to bind. You don't stir, you fold. You don't do this, you do that. Incorporate. Oh, I love the word incorporate. I'm incorporating here. I, this, is, this is a really big business transaction. I'm incorporating the chicken thighs. So now I coated them all up really, really good. Okay, now, where's that mouse? Let me use the clean hand. Come back over here. And there we go. And there we go. We got me back. Okay, so I'm incorporating. I'm folding, not stirring. I'm incorporating, not just making sure everything is covered good. So, oh, here's a piece of brown sugar. Okay, so this is all a little on the mushy side. And we need to take this chicken thigh right there. That's a chicken thigh. Here's a nice big one. You know, this is for the camera. Chicken thigh. Thumb. <laughs> okay. And we need to cook this to exactly the right temperature. If it's undercooked, it could be dangerous. Okay, chicken needs to be cooked. If it's overcooked, it's dry and stringy. So how do you get that perfect right temperature? Well, some people can just do it easily on their own because they know how to do it. But what if you don't know how to do it? I got the mic on my shirt, okay, so that's why you can hear me. I don't mean to be turning my back to you uh, while I'm washing my hands because I got chickens all over my hands, okay? So now I'm washing that the bacteria off. Now, speaking of bacteria, we want it dead. How are we going to do that? Okay, well, the thing that you've learned all our lives is you've got to cook to 167 degrees and it kills the salmonella and the E. coli and all the other uh, bolis and whatever else they got in there. I think there's four groups of bacteria and they just are out to get you. We even got COVID now, COVID something, whatever that number is. I, I, I kind of lost track of what number they're at. Okay, so let me get a bag and I'll be right back. Okay, I got a bag. You can, if you don't have one of those uh, food saver vacuum packer things, you could just use a baggie. The thing is to get the air out of the bag and try to get it as closed as possible. Okay, so this is a vacuum packer. If you don't have a vacuum packer, don't freak out. You can do this right there in your very own home with your uh, baggies. Get a couple of different size baggies. Okay, so get these in there. We're gonna put these in the baggies. Now, we're gonna cook these for, I'm gonna cook, well, the what you need to do is cook them for um, two and a half hours at 155 degrees, okay? So I'll explain that to you in a second. Let me go vacuum pack this and then I'll do some talking to you, okay? Don't, don't wait. I'm back. I just uh, vacuum packed these in the food saver type of machine. The machine is not actually a food saver. This is a vacuum chamber, okay? So it sucked out all the air and it made an ice bag. And now I'm gonna try to get the chicken to be kind of like on the flat side, <laughs> okay? And that's so that the heat can get there. All right, now I'm gonna get this into the water. Give me a second. I am. All right, so this is the Instant Pot. What I'm gonna do with this Instant Pot is I'm going to bring these to the temperature that I want them to be cooked at. They're inside of a food grade plastic baggie type thing that I had all the air sucked out of it. Uh, and I want it to cook right exactly to the temperature that I want it to be cooked at, which is a lot lower than what would happen in the oven, which is over there that you can't see. So in the oven, I'd put it to 350 degrees if I overcook it or undercook it, or if I put it into one of my pans or a cast iron pan, I can undercook it, overcook it, or there's always that possibility 
that I would actually cook it perfectly. So now that I got these in the bag, the bag is sealed. I can turn it any which way I want. This needs to go into the water without me making a mess. <laughs> it's okay. So I'm going to use, where are those tongs that I got out here? I saw some tongs. Oh, here they are. Okay. Let's rinse the tongs. I don't want cross contamination. Okay. Now I'm going to close the tongs because I don't want to puncture the bag. And I'm going to push this under the water. All right, where, where is that mouse? I want to show you, okay. All right, so I'm going to put this under the water and I'm going to show you the overhead camera. Okay, let's get this centerized. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now this is all under the water. I got a little piece picking up out here, sticking out is the right word, so that I can just grab it when I'm ready to go. Uh, I'm going to set it at 155 degrees. You can actually get this thing going ahead of time before you even start to put everything together so that you can get up to the uh, uh, temperature. Sous vide is different than pressure. So we, yes, I'm cooking in an instant pot. No, I'm not using the, uh, the pressure side of it. This particular model, the instant pot pro, you know, I'll put a note and put it on the refrigerator so you can go and, re and remember. Uh, if not, I'll put it in the description below. So when this comes out, we're going we're gonna to finish it up and I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to plug this in now because I'm too far from the plug and get this thing cooking so I can have dinner tonight. <laughs> what, 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 what'd you say? What'd you say? Oh, I think I, I was watching it. I was watching every minute. Minute by minute by minute. What? You mean I didn't have to sit here and watch it? Uh, it was supposed to be in for three hours, but instead, I think I fell asleep. And if I look at it, it's five hours and 50 something minutes. So we've actually gone, what? Five hours? Y yeah, four and a half, almost five hours. So that goes to show you, you can put it in. Let's see what the temperature is. So uh, there is no uh, pressure in here because we are sous vide-ing, suv ing <laughs> SUV. So I'm gonna open this. This will sweat and it will drip some very quite warm water. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna lay it over here because that's a cutting board, it's waterproof. All right, and here is my bag of chicken, 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 chicken. Okay, so I'm gonna put the bag in a plate so we don't make a lot of water. I do have the mouse and the mouse pad. So I'm gonna pick this up. Wow, how simple it was to make this. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Look at all the juice in this bag. Oh, maronna mia. Where's that top camera? Where is that top camera? There it is. Look at all the, the juice in the bag. Let's put it over on this side. Look at that. All right, so I'm not gonna throw that juice away. Heck no. Let's take a reading, okay? I'm gonna read 155, 155.8. So our temperature on this one is, is pretty, pretty accurate. All right, let's come back. Let's come back to the the big papa cameras okay so i'm going to cut this open i'm going to use the scissors i'm just going to cut this open like that okay oh you have no idea how good that smells oh my lord this is restaurant quality smells going on in here so i'm going to put them on this plate for the moment i don't know why i should just get the the platter and put them on the platter you get this at a a uh, okay it is I could actually probably cut through it with these tongs okay so this is like fall off the bone tender now what you can do with this is we can make a gravy if you wanted to and I'll even show you how to do that look at that like magic okay uh, Aluminum foil on here. You could put parchment paper for those of you guys that don't like aluminum foil. And this is where you can get, if you wanted to, you can get a little bit creative, okay? So this is where you change careers and you actually become a painter. Now, the reason for this is, in all honesty, 
this doesn't look like the prettiest thing in town, all right? Because there was no, like, a fire source to brown them. So now you've got a couple of different ways to brown these guys, okay? And we're actually going to choose... I'm going to leave that and just nibble on that little piece there. I'm going to cheat. Cheat, cheat, cheat. Okay. So this is what it looks like. And I put it on aluminum foil. Now, that's not the prettiest sight in town. All right. The prettiest sight in town is right there. <laughs> there I be. Okay. So back to seriousness. Okay. Now, you could take a paintbrush or whatever you think. And you could just, you could just paint these with barbecue sauce. You can paint them with, uh, uh, like I use my own homemade barbecue sauce, which is mwah, oh, so good. But there's another thing. Let's say you don't want to fiddle and faddle around with that. You could take a bowl like this, and you could just get yourself an egg, E-G-G -G egg, out of the fridge, the frigid air, okay? And you could just put the egg in here, uh, a tablespoon of water, just a little bit, so we're gonna now we're gonna paint this these guys right here uh, with this egg wash, and you know what? You know what would make um, a good thing to put in here? A little salt, and I'm gonna put some garlic salt right in there. And this is only gonna be a coating now. Remember, this is gonna go in the oven maybe eight minutes, five minutes, eight minutes, and now I'm just gonna paint these really quick. Because this egg wash, uh, she's a going to brown right up. Yes, sh yes, sir. She, yes, ma'am. She's going to brown right up, and it's going to make this look appealing. Now I'm going to take these. Okay, I'm going to put this in the sinky. I'm going to take this and going to go to the mouse, and I'm going to turn on the beauty cam because ha <laughs> ha, there he is, Mister. I was going to say good looking, but then I'd have to go to confession. All right, so this is going to go in the oven for about eight minutes. But at about five minutes, we are going to start paying attention to what it looks like. Okay, so I'm going to put a timer on for five minutes. Okay, and, and now I'm going to bring out the pan out of the oven. And I am, there you go. There, you got a whole tray full of thighs. Look at that. Look at that. Ain't that pretty. Look at that. Whoops, wrong way. We got the chicken thighs and we put them into uh, a, the sous vide method of cooking. The sous vide method of cooking is we use water, controlled temperature as the heat source. It doesn't go in the water directly. It goes into a food grade uh, uh, bag, a baggie, if you may, okay? And that baggie goes into the water and the food and the water don't mix, okay? So let's put this over here. There we go. That's a plate of thighs, okay? Now, how tender are these thighs? Let's find out. Let's go to the face cam which is right here. So I mean, ugh, terrible, terrible, or oh, 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 wonderful. Okay, so let's find out. Oh, I did make a roux while, I mean, a gravy while that was uh, um, cooking. So let me show you the gravy. All right, so this is the, this is the, um, the juice from the bag. So what did I do? Okay, let me show you the juice. No, not all juice, okay. Uh, this is the juice from the bag. So what I did is two tablespoons of butter, real butter. I use Kerrygold butter. And two tablespoons of flour, regular flour, okay? Uh, and then you put those in and you cook it a little bit so that it becomes a paste. After it becomes a paste, then you're going to uh, pour through a strainer all that liquid that was in the bag, okay? Remember there was a lot of liquid in the bag, okay? So this is the gobbledygook that was in the strainer, and I don't want this in my gravy. That's what's left over, and I poured the liquid through there, and that is no longer in my gravy. I don't want that in my gravy. So now that is in the sink where it belongs. I could take a piece of chicken, 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 okay? 
Then I'm going to get a little of that gravy. I'm going to pour it on. I'm not going to pour it on totally. Now the gravy is a little sweet. Okay, remember we did put, um, what should I call it? Brown sugar in there. So if you don't like sweet, you don't want to put that, that gravy on there or don't even make the gravy. Okay. Okay. So now let's cut this. Let me make this so you can watch it. Okay. So let's cut this here. I don't know if this is close enough to see the juice. That's as close as I can get it. Okay. Okay, so this is completely juicy. Okay, see when I squeeze it, see how the juice comes out? It just kind of drips out. So this means it's not overcooked or undercooked. So I'm going to take a piece. I'm going to do the customary blowing on it. And I'm going to pop it in my mouth. This is the moment of truth. Either this is going to be an amazingly perfectly cooked chicken thigh, or this is going to be pure garbage, okay? Mmm, it's terrible. Don't have any. Go away. Go away. This is all for me. This is restaurant quality chicken thighs. You can make them. This video might look have, might have looked like to be long, but it's just like getting all this stuff on your chicken, putting it in a bag, presetting your sous vide machine or in our case, the Instant Pot Pro. Thank you, Sly. She sent it for the uh, Peter's Kitchen. Turn it on and go skydiving or parachute jumping or snorkeling or, or just go take a nap or watch a Christmas movie. I watch Christmas movies all year long. Mm. Now you can take these and put whatever you want as an individual serving if you're not like a big family and put them in separate bags. Let them cool down a little bit because it'll melt the plastic on the baggies. Okay, that's how hot they are. Okay, and put a single serving and freeze it. And when you take them out of the freezer, if you eat your thighs cold, then by the time you get to work, Sly, you want to take some of these to work? If you want to take three or four thighs to work, put them in a baggie, wait for them to cool off so you can, ouch, touch them, okay? Put a serving in a baggie, pop them in the freezer. Then when you take them out the next day and you take them to work, put it in the refrigerator, they'll be thawed. Or you can heat up your Instant Pot again, fill it with water, and put them all in a bag, and put it, let's say, 140 degrees just to warm them up. It'll take about a half hour or longer and you're ready to rock and roll. All right. We have a, a successful, delicious chicken thighs. You can make sandwiches. You can just, and people will go like, where did you get those things? That's the best tasting thigh I've ever had. Normally they're just like, Egh. so why shouldn't your chicken breasts or chicken thighs? Maybe we'll make another one where we make chicken breasts. Okay, be out of this world enough for you to start a restaurant. Peter Gregg, Miami, Florida. Welcome to Peter's Kitchen. I forgot. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Okay. Uh, in the description below is the link to this. You can also buy me a cup of coffee. You want to buy me a cup of coffee? Look in the link below. You can buy me a cup of coffee. That's a way to support the channel. All right. I love you guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Wish. You have just watched another Peter Gregg video. Something warm, human, and wonderful happens when you watch Peter Gregg. Thank you for watching.